All right, everybody, we had watched, and we were very, very excited to watch this documentary that came out on Netflix called Full Swing that really just deals with professional golf in general, yeah. talking about the PGA and the live. Yeah. Uh, and it highlights certain guys, certain players, and, and certain situations. And look, golf is one of those sports where it's obviously an individual sport. So the best way to market it is to use, obviously, the people you have to set up villains and heroes and underdogs. And, and I feel like this gives you kind of another look inside of, uh, uh, of the PGA at how, who's doing what and how they do it and how you build up this rapport and who these guys really are. I loved it because you kind of see on the, on the outside of, oh, you know, golf, very gentleman's sport. Like, you know, hey, make sure there's no trash on the grass or anything like this. And you don't really know who the guys are. You really get to know who the guys are. And it's not a golf documentary that is just about Tiger Woods. That's oh, yeah. something that, that I found <laughs> fascinating. My favorite, and I think we each need to list our, our favorite part. Uh, but first, overall, just your thoughts about the whole documentary. Well, first of all, I've been obsessed with golf for a long time. Ever since I was young, I just, I just, I, I really do love the game. And even in terms of uh, my profession, one of the first professional opportunities I got was to direct a series for the PGA of America. So I got to work with Jordan Spieth when he was number one in the world. I got to work with Justin Thomas and his father during an interview. So it was really cool that the very first episode is Jordan Spieth yeah. and Justin Thomas. So I, I enjoyed the series greatly. I think it'll be more, even more enjoyable for people who are just sort of getting into the game because they do take mm -hmm. some time to like explain how making cuts work and how tournament, professional tournament golf mm -hmm. works. Um, very similar, because this is the same um, crew, production crew, I believe, who made Drive to Survive, yes. which I was an outsider to Formula One. So when the pandemic hit and we were all quarantined in 2020, Darby Lou and I started watching Drive to Survive. I didn't know anything about Formula One. We became obsessed with it. So that really got us into the sport in a way that I think full swing will get a lot of people uh, into the game That's of golf. That's a great here. way to put it. Overall impressions. Mike. I loved it. I loved it. Just it took you from the mindset of each golfer from each episode. You start with Brooks Kepka and the guy who I've liked Brooks all the time, but he felt like he's been crying that entire episode. Yeah. The guy who's running at the, the top time. of the mountain. Yeah, but then you see him throw a nice uh, Copenhagen winter in too, and next you know I'm going for that. It takes you to Matt, uh, Matt, Matty Fitzpatrick, yeah. you know, who dominated over in England, right? Came over here and just couldn't get a win. Top five, top five, top ten, blew it on the Sunday and finally got over the hump and got that win. Then you go to Tony Fino. U.S. Right? Open. Uh, yeah, U.S. Open. Then you go to Tony Fino, right? Family guy, right? Has, I believe, eight or nine kids. Um, his uh, wife's dad passed away, mm -hmm. so she ended up, they always ended up travel with him. And you see the messaging from other players, you know, maybe the distractions, maybe this. But Tony gets out there and says the last thing they will ever be is a distraction. Kind of another guy who hadn't finished on the mountaintop who's played great golf um, but never really won that championship. Then you go to Joel Damon, a guy who literally says he's the worst golfer on the PGA. That was incredible. And, uh, you know, went through uh, statistical cancer, and he's still out there playing. And another thing that kind of hit home for me, you know, especially Joel and Tony Finau, you know, uh, they got emotional over losing their parents, you know, 15, 16, 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. And as a guy for me who lost a parent at a young age in a tragic way, you know, it makes it almost humanizes me that these guys who are at the top of their game, who are stars on a Netflix series, who are on Friday, Saturday, Sunday playing golf, still have the same emotions, the same range of feelings that I feel. So I think the entire thing is great if you watch it. It's not about Tiger Woods, but you see what Tiger Woods did for the game, yeah. right? Just the, how he expanded the game and got guys like Tony Finau to go and like, you know what? I'm going to play golf because of Tiger Woods. I thought it was a great series. Yeah, yeah. And, and my favorite part, I want to I go through our favorite parts. My favorite was the first episode. It was Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas. You like that story? Yeah, though? because it reminded me, you know, they played against and with each other since they were young, since they were kids. It reminded me kind of of, of travel ball, of travel baseball. You know, those are some of the best memories you have playing in the game, going to play tournaments with your buddies. And, and you see kind of that track of how Jordan was always like the star and Justin was right behind him. It was always Jordan Speed. Justin was really good. If you look, the class of golfers that came out in his and Jordan's class mm -hmm. is absolutely ridiculous, the amount of guys that, are, that still have a PGA card right now. But following them to where you see Jordan not only be the star when he's younger, but when he gets to 21 years old, coming in the tour, absolutely going nuts, winning majors, and then finally Justin Thomas breaks. So you get to see both sides of the coin. I, I thought it was, I love rivalries, mm -hmm. right? I love Red Sox-Yankees. I love Auburn, Alabama. I love Ohio State, Michigan. You know, I, I, I love the old school rivalries in the NBA that, that we used to have, like the Bad Boy Pistons. You look at Larry Bird and, and Magic and Michael and, and Kareem and all these guys. But it, I love when they talk about the rivalries between golfers because if you think a rivalry means a lot when it's between groups of teams, 
like a football game rivalry. You have a lot of people. In golf, it is you and it's that other person. All right, now you each have fans and crossover fans and things like that, but I find it fascinating being the one person. That's why like golf and tennis and individual sports are just blow my mind as a guy that just really played team sports growing up is that it is all on you. All of the emotions, all the good, all the bad, all the nervousness, all the triumph, all the defeat goes through one person. You can't share that with your shortstop that you just lost the game together. Oh, I love you, man. It's you and your caddy, and in Justin Thomas's case, you know, your father. So yeah. I, I found I thought that out of all of them, and they were all great. The Tony mm-hmm. Finau one was great. Uh, the one about the rookies, you know, I even like Morikawa, even though some people. You know, he kind of came off wrong in it. But that, to me, really, that hit home for me because I I know how they felt growing up playing against you. One thing I really liked is there is this perception about golf that it is only reserved for kids who come from rich families, who can afford expensive clubs and tee times. Oh, and no doubt, tee times are very expensive. It's not just like mm-hmm. taking a tennis ball out, you know, and hitting yeah. with your racket or going out with a football or a basketball. Uh, I thought... Highlighting Matt Fitzpatrick and Tony Finau really sort of dispro- disproved that narrative that you need to come from a wealthy family. First of all, Matt Fitzpatrick had these scorecards to where you could go back and he has tracked seven thousand shots. That's ridiculous. Not just from his rounds, but you heard his brother ask him on the tee box, "Wait, you actually track your driving range shots as well?" And he said, "Yeah." Like to be so analytical and to work that hard and to use the data, that's one way to win. Another way is some guys just go off feel and sort of wing it, you know? Tony Finau's story was just as interesting to me that he came from a family with no money and his his father put up a mattress against the garage door so that he could take swings. And that was the only thing, the, the garage wouldn't even lift. The garage door wouldn't even open. It was just so that he and his brother could practice their golf shot in the garage. And now he's a professional golfer. I love that. And the fact that he travels with his family. He has, what is it, eight kids? Mm-hmm. Seven eight. kids, eight yeah. kids, something like that. To take them on the road because his wife, like Blaine said, had just lost her father. Just imagine how difficult it must be to just go on the road every single week by yourself mm-hmm. and compete in a game that is as mental as golf is. Now all of a sudden you have your entire family there and eight children. I have an 18-month-old and a four-week-old. We're already like, man, this is intense. Every moment requires focus. He has yeah. that many kids and still remains family-oriented, and he's winning on the tour. Yeah. It was very, it just, it was yeah. fascinating. You know, they always talk about playing man, <laughs> due to the amount of kids you have, you're either playing man defense or zone defense. Yeah. Like you and Darby have two children. Y'all can still play man. Oh, Y'all yeah. can still go man to man. Tony Fiend out and his wife, they're running prevent defense. <laughs> They're praying. Like, you're just back giving up everything underneath. Like, please don't well, put another cool thing about that. Tony yeah, exactly another cool right. thing about that Tony Fino episode is they wouldn't go play golf when they were young. They mm. couldn't afford it. So what would they do? They'd go chip and putt because it's free. Yeah. <laughs> they'd go chip and putt. And maybe That's how some, you get good. And maybe sometimes hit range balls when they could afford it. He said it. they'd hit against the mattress for a week mm-hmm. and then one day a week go to the range to see if they were hitting them straight because yeah. they couldn't tell yeah, against the that mattress. You know, you I kind of develop and feel. I think the, the, the Brooks Kepka episode to me, man, it's just, you know, just the, the ride of emotions for Brooks Kepka. you know, being a guy who won a lot, who won a lot. And now it seems like he went through some injuries you know, I, I I just look at him and I see the way he's talking on the episode. You know, why can't I win? Was it doesn't look like Brooks Kepka's having fun anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like he's going out there and having huh. fun no. playing golf. Has, has anybody ever it. had fun playing golf? You, What's that you like? Can see it. Well, I feel like if you go through a professional, like you love, yeah, it. yeah, you love. Yeah, I mean, right. Yeah. You love. Randall Chambly did have a good quote in here though. He said a lot of the guys who were playing their best, they they always hated themselves when they were playing their best golf because they were so focused in mm-hmm. on it. They didn't focus on their private lives. But I understand what you yeah. mean. Like, Brooks Kepka does not look like the same guy who won four majors in two years. A yeah, years and ago. It, was just, it was just wild to me. And another cool thing, I think the Tony Finau one was the best episode, in my opinion. Tony Finau was going, was with Tiger in his group when Tiger, I think, won the Masters. I, I had forgotten that. And he won the Masters. The final pairing on Sunday. The final yeah. pairing. And he said Tony hadn't talked to him the entire round or something like that. And Tony finally got up the courage to go say something to Tiger, and he says something to Tiger, and Tiger didn't say anything to him. He t- and Tony says, I've never seen a man that focused before, and you can tell. When Tiger, when the greats zero it in, when it matters the most, the, nothing else matters. A plane could crash on the hole next to him. They wouldn't even notice because they're, they're, they're already so focused on the next shot, and what, that's that championship mentality. What do I call it? I say it all the time. How do I hit, focus. How do I hit the under on Flaming Dragon Fridays? 
Ninja, Ninja Focus. Focus. Mm -hmm. The reason this documentary is so much more exciting now than it would have been five years ago, it would have been great then too, but the live aspect of this, watching yeah. these guys, especially when they filmed, some of them didn't know if they were going, the Ian Poulter Ian story, Poulter, I yeah. felt for Ian Poulter a little bit more, and you can understand, look, I've never criticized these guys who are saying, I play golf for a living, someone is offering to pay me more money to work less for what I do best, you know? And none of us know 100% where the money is coming from that we're being paid for yeah. our boss's behavior. I, I, I understand there is an ethical part about going and playing for Live that must be considered. At the end of the day, they're being paid to do their profession. So that is a part that I've never criticized. The part where I find it the most interesting is for guys like Ian Poulter and Phil Mickelson, you're basically going, you're doing what what David Beckham and Zlatan Ibrahimovic did when they came and played soccer in America. This is basically your semi-retirement. Mm -hmm. Now for guys like a Matthew Wolf or even a Dustin, Dustin Johnson, Johnson, I mean, yeah. will, will Brooks ever return to form? I don't know. Is this their semi-retirement? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Matthew Wolf is just getting started. So that's yeah. like some young blood that lived, the live tour was able to get. It's just, this is what made this year so fascinating to make yeah. this documentary with the PGA Tour versus Live Golf. Yeah, well, I always find it fu funny when people are like, oh, well, yeah. You know where that money's coming from? Yeah, where's your money coming from? Yeah. You know where you, you want me to tell you where most money's coming from? Not good places. No. Like there's not 90% good places where the money's coming from and just 10% is bad. Most money that's coming, that, I'll have people be like, oh, I will not support the Live Tour, but I love the NBA. Oh, really? Or Nike. Oh, really? Or a lot of these yeah. guys were already getting paid by Nike. Let me tell you where Nike that money comes from. It's another interesting thing. But again, I do, when you watch Roy McIlroy, when you watch him talk in this, and even before the documentary or whatever, you get a sense like, man, this guy deeply has a deep passion for legacy. And that means something yeah, to him. Yeah. And that's where you can find it is on the PGA Tour. I still think the PGA Tour is going to be the premier golf league moving that. forward. And I think Liv, the best part that Liv will have helped with is forcing the PGA Tour to fix some of these problems they should have fixed a long time ago. So Liv will play into that. Mm -hmm. I just think moving forward, the PGA Tour is still going to be the premier golf league in the world, as it should be. It should be here in America. And another one of the big reasons for that is the guy's name we already mentioned. Tiger Woods. He may not be in his prime. He may not win any more majors. But as long as that guy says, I'll never leave the PGA Tour, then I got to keep that core. If you're the yeah. PGA, you got to keep that core. Yeah, for sure. All right. I want to rate this one out of 10, like we normally do for reviews. But I do want to say to me that the documentary achieved what I believe they meant for it to achieve. To achieve. You know what I wanted to do after I watched that documentary? I wanted to go play golf. Yep. I was already I looking at new that irons. Is the, that <laughs> hey, there you is go. the overarching theme of talking about marketing and expanding the brand. Major League Baseball, take note. Market your stars better, please. Can you imagine if they did one of these with Major League Baseball where you follow a guy? I just, I get excited thinking about it. I think it'd be great for the sport. But out of 10, I am going 9.6. Really? That's high. Nine point. Wow. Y'all know me. I'm a hard grader. I'm going 9.6. It's really hard to hit a perfect 10. Uh, really, the reason I didn't give it a perfect 10, I didn't love the rookies episode, and Brooks Kepka just pissed me off. Gotcha. What about you? I'm going to go 8 out of 10. 8? Okay. 8 out of 10. I feel, I feel like it was a great series. I would like to see a little bit more Tiger. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go 7. I, I did enjoy it. Um, I think, like I said, people who are sort of interested in golf and they're just getting into it will find it even more enjoyable, which is why I would rate Drive to Survive, the F1 That's documentary, a little bit higher for me. That was up a little bit more like a 9. And look, it's easier to cre create a documentary about drama when the guys who are racing could die at any moment because yeah. they're running each other off the track. But I thought that they did a great job of highlighting the game of golf, and I, I will watch whatever next season they have. I heard there's a tennis one as well, and I can't believe I let it slip through the cracks, but I'm going to watch that one this weekend. Definitely. Well, tell us in the comments, if you have seen it, tell us out of 10 what you rate it. If you have not seen it, go check that thing out. I think you're going to like it. And also subscribe while you're here. Turn that notification bell on. And hit them straight.